Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Did you know that saying yes to your success can actually lead sometimes to suffering? What is your definition of suffering? We don't even like thinking about it, much less actually coming up with a working definition of your life. But if this is something that can happen to you, you need to be prepared now to give that pain a purpose for progress so that you can get back up off the floor and back up back into life in a way where you can actually be fulfilled by what's going on. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into what started happening to me about a year ago. See, I heard deep down within my spirit, my higher power say, this stops now. And I was so excited because I was being betrayed by somebody very close to me. And I thought it was my higher power telling me that that relationship was going to be healed. And that's not what happened. After 10 months of intensive therapy together and individually, it was very apparent that this person was not going to stop inflicting suffering on me. So what is my definition of suffering? It is inflicting pain upon someone for no reason, simply other than you can. We've seen suffering where people have been abused physically, but then there's also emotional abuse. There's financial abuse. There's the mental abuse. And those things aren't always apparent. And someone does it where they hand you their dysfunction and say, okay, you handle it. Allow me to continue to engage in my behaviors and I'll throw out enough crumbs of connection to give you deferred hope. But that hope is actually very dysfunctional because it is not based on what can, what's actually happening. It's based on their potential that they have no desire to fulfill. So I want to give you some tips when you find yourself suffering, what it is that you can do to alleviate it to pain and then giving that pain a purpose for progress. Because have I suffered? Oh yeah, the disillusion of um, the dream that I had, uh, also my home, um, having to give up part of my business and support somebody else if for a while, because I was the primary breadwinner. All of these things caused me to go down to my knees. I was in excruciating pain, but I also have a faith that this is how I fight my battles, on my knees, praying, praying, give me wisdom, give me discernment, give me maturity, so that when I get back up, I'm standing higher than what I did before. And that came through steps. And the very first step that I want to give you is that there is a difference between forgiveness and trust, because you can forgive somebody and then what you're doing is you're saying that forgiveness is completely dependent upon you. They don't have to do anything. That offending party that is causing the suffering, they don't have to do anything in order for you to forgive them. Because you're saying, I'm choosing to move on. That is not 
the same as trust. Trust is completely built on them and what they're going to have to do. Trust has to be earned. You do not give trust. Once you have been betrayed, you want to start saying, okay, they're telling me who they really are. So I need to be able to see it, not through the perception of their potential, but through what they're revealing with their actions. Trust is conditional. It requires everything from the offender and the per- perpetrator, and it is based on their works. And there are five levels to trust. First, that they have to show that they get you. And most, once they've betrayed you, can't even get past that. And the second, they're for you. Hmm. So there's two right out of the five. And if they can't show consistently three months, six months, nine months, three month increments, that they're going to do everything they can to earn the right to be back in your life. Well, you can forgive, but there's no reason to continue to have them stay in your life because they're already showing you who they really are and what they intend to continue to do. The second thing I want you to know is that you did not attract this by, um, oh, needing life to teach you a lesson and the universe bringing this to your doorstep. The self-help industry can be full of so much shit that will actually stink up your experience. Okay. No, what you did was you were being brilliant. You were being the magnificent you, caring and kind and compassionate and giving people grace through extra chances. When you are betrayed, not just hurt, hey, you know what? We're all going to be hurt and we're all going to hurt others. I'm talking about being mean, malicious. What happened was the very things that are beautiful about you were weaponized and used against you. The fact that you're willing to give extra chances and they're going, okay, we're going to use that for our benefit. The, the fact that you've been through pain in your past and you don't want anyone else to experience that. So you're willing to overlook offenses when actually No, you need to be paying attention, but they like the fact that because you want to see the good in everybody, that they're actually going to use that for their gain at the price of your esteem, confidence, and worth. So you did nothing to attract this besides be your beautiful self. And then they decided for whatever reason, to use that against you. Okay, so now we move into step number three. What do you value about you? I actually, whenever I work with my clients, one of the first things I do is I put them uh, through a test where we discover what what's brilliant about you and what are your weaknesses because people will come in the back door through your weaknesses but they'll also come in right through the front door of your brilliance so you need to understand both of those and then once you do that you begin to draw boundaries around it and boundaries are not walls boundaries are containers for your personal power. It's when you say, this is what I'm going to use for my progress. 
Boundaries, number one, keep you safe. Number two, when you draw them, they give you very important information about the other person that you're involved with and their reaction to it. Nobody reacts to a boundary healthy. I'm going to let you know that right now because we're taught in society not to have boundaries. But if they come back and they're like, oh, hey, I get it. How can we work on this? Well, then that leads you to step three where uh, now you can say they're, they're, they can potentially draw their own boundaries and so you're you're firing off how to get healthy because that's step four. You can only get healthy when you have boundaries. When you have no boundaries, people are coming in and they're they're trampsing all over your garden of growth, and they're actually um, sowing the seeds of you questioning yourself. You should be challenged. I challenge my clients all the time. But if you're with someone that causes you to question yourself and go, wait, am I okay? Oh, you are being manipulated for somebody else's gain at your expense. So you have to know what you value and you need to put values or boundaries around those values. And then after that, you have to realize that not everybody will be able to grow with you, which means not everybody will be able to go with you, or maybe they'll be able to go with you to a certain level, but not past that. So this is what I had to go through. I, I just gave you over a year of what I've been going through with my team, my coaches, my mentors, and what they've been taking me through. I just gave you the condensed version. So maybe you can begin to realize that saying yes to your success doesn't mean things are going to turn out the way you thought they were, but they can actually turn out even better. But for that to happen, you have to take that suffering and you have to give it a purpose for your progress, not someone else's. And then that will take it to pain. But then over time, that pain actually turns into what's brilliant about you. And it no longer hurts as much. And the wounded part of you heals. And it becomes the wealthiest part about you. If I can assist you, you with this, I would be honored for at least to have a conversation about maybe an area where you've been suffering. one 699 7791 or you can go to canhypnosishelpyou.com. I believe in you, and until you can believe in yourself, just borrow mine.